What's up my friend, Abby here, and welcome back to Ask Abby, where I answer your writing questions and help you make your story matter. If you saw my live stream yesterday, you know exactly what is going on in my author life. My audiobook for 100 Days of Sunlight is not coming out on the day I wanted it to. Yes, okay, fine, it's my own fault. I should have given myself way more time. I should have anticipated that there were going to be really long waiting periods for things to quality check. They don't just take my word for it. Hey, I'm an audio engineer. I do podcasts, I do videos, I do music, and I know what I'm doing. Trust me, just, just publish it. No, no, that's not how it works. Audible has to like go through with a fine tooth comb and look at every single audio file their robots do anyway. and decide whether or not they're gonna publish it. And apparently this process takes like two to four weeks. Why did I not know this? <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of fun, fun surprise. I don't have any idea when my audiobook will be available for you to listen to. That's always fun, super happy about that. But they say good things are worth waiting for and I promise you, it is going to be good when it finally is able to be delivered to your ears. So yeah, super annoying, but that's the indie author life. I've never done this before and we learned some things the hard way. Anyway, some great questions came in on the Facebook group and the YouTube community and I'm super excited to answer them. So let's roll that intro and get into it. Why does your story matter? Good question. What if I told you that there's a science behind every great story? I don't just teach you how to write. I teach you how to change the world with your story and make your author dreams come true. In case you're new around here and you don't know how this works, here's the deal. You ask me writing questions and I show up here on YouTube every other week or so to answer those questions. And there are two ways to submit questions to the show. The first way is to hit the join button below this video, get on the inside of the YouTube community and post your question in the community tab on my channel. The second way is to join my Patreon. So go to patreon.com slash Abby Emmons, get yourself inside the Facebook group and you can post your question there. Just make sure you hashtag it, ask Abby so that I see it. Okay, let's get to the questions. First question is from Chloe. I'm so excited. I'm currently finishing the final chapter of the first draft of my book, which I began last January. My question for our community and Ask Abby is this, how do you go about your first round of developmental edits on a first draft? I know the big what to do is to make sure everything matters to the protagonist and her internal conflict, but how? Is there a specific method or tip anyone can share? Line edits are my bread and butter. Big picture edits terrify me, thanks. Big picture edits are terrifying. They even scare me sometimes because it's like, you walked away from this book, you finished it, you walked away from it. Now coming back to it, you're like, how do I edit again? <laughs> the struggle is real because writers are really not editors, you know? I mean, we are, but we aren't. And it's really, really difficult to look at your work objectively. That being said, go into it with a mindset of, I know I'm not going to catch everything. Okay, I know I'm going to give it to another editor and beta readers and ARC readers, and they are going to find things in this book, in this story that are kind of off. And I'm going to probably have to make adjustments. But I feel like a lot of writers make developmental edits or revisions more complicated than they need to be. <laughs> like at the most basic level, all you really want your story to be is engaging. You want your reader to constantly be wondering what is going to happen next. You want them to keep reading. So with that in mind, ask yourself at the end of every chapter, what changed? <laughs> it's literally as simple as that. Yes, you can ask yourself way more questions and get super deep into the revision process. I actually made a whole video on how to revise a novel. So developmental edits, that's what I talk about in that video. But all you really need to think about is cause and effect. What is changing at the end of every chapter? This is something that so many stories fail to do. And when a book loses your interest, it's because things aren't changing anymore. Right? You feel like it's the same thing happening over and over again. No progress is really being made. That's why scene cards are so helpful because you are asking yourself at the end of each scene, 
And so, what is this trigger? How is this the cause of another effect? How does this make the next scene inevitable? Everything has meaning. Everything matters. That's your goal here, is to make everything matter. But you're wondering, how do you do that? How do you include her internal conflict and make everything matter to your protagonist? Really, all you have to ask yourself is, what is changing? Or how does this scene set up something that's going to happen in the next scene? cause and effect. That is what I put my focus on when I develop mental edit because I have already outlined the story. I know the story is good. I know the story is strong. I've already fixed major plot holes and made sure that the story itself is strong. But does it read the same way that I imagined it? Because if it doesn't, I have work to do. That's basically your goal here, is you're trying to make it feel as exciting to the reader as it was to you in your imagination. Okay, next question is from Julia. Thanks for the amazing content. Here are my questions. One, how do you create a good action scene? And two, how do you get over the fear of not making your next book in a series not as good? Thanks. Okay, first things first, action scenes. A good action scene is an action scene where you are immersed in the character's point of view. You want your reader to feel the adrenaline as your character feels it. This is the pitfall that a lot of writers fall into when it comes to writing action scenes because they can see everything that's happening, right? They have an omniscient view of everything as the author. Maybe something's happening over here with these characters, something else is happening here, and it's too big of a scope to the point where you don't feel immersed in any of these characters' point of view because you're looking at everything and it quickly becomes confusing and overwhelming and not as emotional because you're not feeling what the character is feeling. Here's the thing, the more action you include, the more external conflict happening in this scene, the slower and muddier it will read. It's kind of like world building in a way because you have a lot going on, but you don't want your reader to see everything that's going on because they won't feel immersed. They'll just feel like they're being crushed by all this information that they don't need to know. And with action scenes, things can get very confusing very quickly and a confused mind always says, no. Okay, now your second question. The fear of your second book or your sequel not being as good as the first book. This is a very real struggle that a lot of authors deal with. Honestly, I have struggled with this a lot myself, even not in like publishing, but just in writing. After writing 100 Days of Sunlight, I'm like, I love this book so much. How am I going to write something that matches it or is better than it? But I was thinking about that the wrong way. So I began to see that I don't have to make something as good or better. It's different. It's a whole different book. It will be totally different. It can't even be compared because it's different. And I can understand feeling more like this if you are writing a series, okay? The second book in your series will be as good as the first book. But again, it's a different book. So instead of comparing it, Try to enjoy it for what it is. It should have its own flavor. I try to think of different books from the same author as like a meal at a restaurant. Okay, if you went to a restaurant and you got the same meal every single time, it would be pretty boring, right? Like you expect to get good food from this restaurant if they have good food, but you want something different every time. So don't compare it like, oh, this isn't as good as that. Don't let self-doubt hold you back. Some sequels end up being even better than their first installment. Next question is from Casey. I've always thought of myself as a discovery writer. Sometimes it's not until close to the end of writing a story that I really feel like I truly understand a character, but I think I may love outlining. After seeing several of your videos, I decided to challenge myself to using your handouts and writing a novella that had been floating in my head for a little while. And now, not a month later, I've completed I have a completed outline and I feel so excited to write this story. The funny thing is, as I wrote the outline and walked through the different scenes in my head, it felt very similar to when I Discovery wrote. So maybe I'm a Discovery outliner. Thank you so much for your Patreon and sharing your thoughts with us. My writing process has been changed for the better. That is so awesome. I'm so glad. 
Speaking of outlining, what does your outline look like? What are some ideas or ways of outlining that you've seen that works for other writers? I definitely felt like that felt like a poser when I sat down to write that outline. My first run through had like one to five bullet points for each scene I envisioned. My second time through had quite a bit more like full sentences and a lot more of what the characters are feeling in the scene, but it was still mostly bullet points. I know everyone must find their own process, but ideas of things to try can be so helpful. My outlines are incredibly detailed, as you probably know. <laughs> like 15 to 30,000 words is my average, depending on how long the book is going to be, how detailed the book is going to be. But that's just me. But every writer does need to find their own process, and that's why I always say that. And a good way to find your own process is to ask yourself, when I sit down to actually write this book, what kind of outline would make me feel the most excited and the most inspired to write. I went a long time in the beginning of writing without an outline and it did not get me excited or inspired to write. I felt like I didn't know where I was going. I felt lost and aimless and listless and bored. And I discovered that a really detailed outline, including source material like large pieces of dialogue and conversations and even some narrative written ahead of time, that is what gets me really excited to jump into my story and write. But it will be different for every writer and sometimes every day is different. Like some days I sit down and I'm like, I just need a couple of bullet points and I know what I'm writing in this scene because I've played it over in my head so many times. So if it's working, you're doing it right. Okay, if you're, if you're feeling inspired and excited when you sit down to write, you're outlining right. So don't overthink it too much. There's no right or wrong way to outline. If it's working for you, keep doing that. Don't fix what isn't broken. <laughs> okay, last question is from Kay. Question for Ask Abby. How does one figure out what characters are truly needed for the plot and which are not? I have a character I had originally created to move along the plot for the MC, but now I'm not so sure he is really needed. How do I decide if he should stay or needs to go? I love your advice. Thank you for everything. Okay, so there are two kinds of side characters. Side characters with subplots and side characters without subplots. This totally changed the way I see side characters. Side characters with subplots are the characters that are going to have their own goals, their own agendas, their own desires and fears and misbeliefs. And through their character arc, whether it's negative or positive, they will bring another layer of depth to your story probably another theme to your story as well. But there are also characters without subplots and those characters are less prominent, they have less screen time, and they're the first to go when you're going through your story being like, is that character really necessary? It will probably be a character who doesn't have a subplot. So it's, they're not really that important to the story. They still have a part to play, but they shouldn't be getting a lot of story time or screen time, <laughs> however you wanna see it. They shouldn't be getting a lot of the attention, okay? So if this character falls more into that category of side character without a subplot, without an agenda, without a goal, desire, fear, and misbelief, and he's taking up a lot of story time, then he probably needs to go. However, he might actually belong in the other group of side characters that I mentioned, side characters who have a side plot. And to figure it out, all you have to really do is ask yourself, what is his agenda? Why does he need to be in the story? Not just to move along the plot for the MC, but to move along his own plot. And this is something that a lot of stories fail to do. And you have these side characters who don't really matter that much. They feel like they don't have a lot of depth. And the reason they don't have a lot of depth is because they don't really have their own agenda. They may have like a kind of weak surface level agenda of like, oh yeah, they're here because of this. But why? Like what is their why? What is their internal conflict? And that's why it's so valuable to figure out the internal conflict for characters that you're not even going to go in their head. You're not even going to go super deep into their character. Maybe not even give them a character arc, but it's still important for the reader to realize and see why is this character here? Why do they need to be here? Not just the plot needs them to be here. So that is a better question to ask yourself is not why do I need this character to be here, but why does the character need to be here? It seems like such a subtle difference, but it 
is actually a huge difference. Okay, boom, awesome questions, guys. As always, I hope you got something valuable out of my replies. If you would like a question answered here on YouTube, you know what to do. Hit the join button below this video or go to patreon.com slash Abby Emmons. Get yourself inside the inner circle group where you can post a question and hang out with the awesome Writers Life Wednesday inner circle Patreon community. Smash that like button if you liked this video and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because I post writing videos and publishing videos every single Wednesday and I would love to have you here in the community. Until next week, my friend, Rock on. But it will be different for every writer. Ugh, I can't pronounce words today. <laughs> but I also have this intense fear of forgetting every thought that comes through my mind. So like the minute I have an idea, I go and write it down because I'm so scared I'm gonna forget it. <laughs>